Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a rational equation with cubes. We have z cubed plus z divided by z minus i equals 7 plus 9i. And I'll be presenting at least two methods and let's get to work. So for my first method, I'm going to go ahead and cross multiply z cubed plus z, I'm going to write it as z minus i multiplied by 7 plus 9i, okay? So we kind of have like a cubic equation on the left, so we can go ahead and, uh, you know, make this a full cubic and then try to solve it. But I'm going to branch off a little bit uh, after I show you how the cubic formula is going to proceed or the cubic equation is going to proceed, and then we'll talk about the second method. Now, if you go ahead and distribute this, preserving uh, the powers of z, so you're going to get something like this. z cubed plus z equals 7 plus 9i multiplied by z. And then we're going to distribute the negative i, which is going to give us negative 7i minus 9i squared, which is plus 9. So I could probably write this as 9 minus 7i plus 9 minus 7i, which looks a little better. Okay? Now, Let's see how we can put the powers of z together, or I mean the z terms together. I'm going to go ahead and subtract this from both sides. And I'm going to leave the 9 minus 7i on the right hand side because that's a constant. Makes sense? So now uh, I'm going to go ahead and subtract z minus 7 plus 9i z equals 9 minus 7i. And now this becomes a cubic, but let's go ahead and combine these two terms. To combine them, we're going to uh, subtract their coefficients, that's going to give me a negative 6 minus 9i, so I might as well just use a minus sign here and write this as 6 plus 9i multiplied by z equals 9 minus 7i. Awesome. This is how the cubic formula works. I'm going to write the identity one more time, a plus b cubed minus 3ab times a plus b equals, remember from the binomial theorem, this is equivalent to a cubed plus b cubed. This also shows you how you can factor sum of two cubes because if you simplify this, take out a plus b and, you know, expand, you'll get the formula. But that's a different story. Let's go ahead and stick with the cubic formula. So we're going to call this z. a plus b is z. And then by comparing these two equations, we're able to get a b and a cube plus b cube, which is going to give us a system. Notice that this is the same as 3ab. So a b is going to be that divided by 3, which is 2 plus 3i. Conveniently, everything is a multiple of 3, right? And then a cubed plus b cubed is just going to be what? 9 minus 7i. Now, here's how we can solve this system. This looks cubic, but it's actually quadratic. If you cube both sides here, uh-oh, we got a cube, a comp <laughs> complex number, but it's not super bad. And then by repeating this. So here's what I can do with the second equation. Let me tell you right away. I can isolate b cubed from here, write it as 9 minus 7i minus a cubed, and then plug this into here. And that gives me a cubed times 9 minus 7i minus a cubed equals 2 plus 3i to the third power. You can do this, no big deal. I just want to show you the method, okay? Now, a cubed multiplied by a cubed is going to give us a to the 6. You don't want that. Let's go ahead and call this c. And now we get a quadratic because c times c is c squared. You get the idea? And of course, you're going to get a c as well, something times c. This will become quadratic. Solve it. Good luck with that. But that's going to give you the value of c, which is a cubed. Then you have to cube root it. But again, this is way too much work. So that's not a very good idea. So go ahead and talk about the second method, or should I say the branch off. After we cross multiplied, remember this is what we got, right? And at that point, actually, you didn't have to go into the cubic formula deal, right? You could do this. Why don't we call z a plus bi? And that's the name of the channel, right? Okay. Now, let's go ahead and plug it in. And then we're, we're going to go ahead and plug it in here, too. And of course, there's going to be a lot of simplifications. And then our idea is basically the comparing these two numbers, uh, real parts and real parts, imaginary parts and real imaginary parts, 
and then come up with a system which is going to give us the value of a and b, which is going to give us the z, right? <laughs> Hopefully. But this is going to require some work, of course. So, but let's just get to it. Uh, I want to cube it this way, a cubed, and then I want to cube bi, which is going to give me minus b cube i, because i cubed is negative i, and now plus three, plus three abi multiplied by a plus bi. I just used my famous formula, or infamous. And then, on the right-hand side, I would like to write this as a plus b minus 1i, and I want to kind of multiply in a smart way. For example, I'm going to distribute to a over the 7, that's going to give me 7a, and then I'm going to distribute to b minus 1 times i over 9i, that's going to give me minus 9 times b minus 1, because i squared is negative 1. And then, finally, I want to multiply a times 9i, which is going to give me 9ai, and then finally I want to multiply the 7 by b minus 1i, which is going to give me 7b minus 7. And of course all of that is going to be multiplied by i, and that's going to be my number on the right hand side. So I kind of simplify this product, makes sense? We talked about it already, if you haven't seen the lecture videos, please go ahead and check them out. Now we still need to simplify the left hand side, this is going to give me 3a squared bi, minus 3ab squared, because i squared is negative 1 again, don't ever forget that. And now the left hand side gives us a cubed, and then minus, or plus a, minus 3ab squared, those are the real parts. And then the imaginary part is going to be, I'm going to get 3a squared b, plus b, minus b cubed, right? And that's going to be the imaginary part times i. Now, if you set this equal to this number here, what are you going to get? Real parts equal to real parts, and so on and so forth, right? So from here you get the following. This is the real part, and that's supposed to equal the other real part, which I can expand and write as follows. And then of course the imaginary parts are also going to be equal. This is the imaginary part, this is the imaginary part. So let's stick uh, to the pattern, use the bottom one first and that's going to equal the top one, imaginary part 9a plus 7b minus 7. Awesome. You got yourself a really problematic sort of uh, system, but it can be solved. But again, that's a lot of work, so the second method is in that sense more important. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. I know you're gonna probably going to hate me for this, but hey, this is how you appreciate the second method, right? No pain, no gain. Okay, forgive me for this. So here's what we're going to do. First of all, z cubed plus z is factorable. So why not factor it, right? Ready? So what are the big news? The big news is z squared plus 1 is also factorable. Well, wait a minute. We know difference of two squares is factorable, but what about sum of two squares? In the complex world, sum of two squares is factorable. Remember when you multiply a complex number z by its conjugate, you get uh, a squared plus b squared, which is the absolute value squared, right? So that's the trick. So we can basically write this as z plus i times z minus i. Oh, come on, it can't be this easy. And divide by z minus i, obviously z minus i is not going to be zero unless z is equal to i. If z is equal to i, we're going to have something problematic at the bottom, so z can't be i, so we're all good. We can go ahead and cancel that out. So, z minus i is going to cancel out, and we're going to end up with something fairly simple. z squared plus z i equals 7 plus 9 i. This is quadratic. If you want, you can go ahead and add something to both sides, or just replace z with a plus b i again, but this time the solution is going to be a lot easier. So, just for fun, let's go ahead and use the quadratic formula. z squared plus i z minus 7 plus 9 i equals 0. From here, z is going to be negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, by the, where, by the way, i squared is going to be negative 1, minus plus 4 times this. The challenge about this method is finding the square root of a complex number, which might be somewhat complicated. This is negative 1, 28, minus 1 is 27, and then 4 times 9 is 36, and obviously you can take out a 9, right? negative i plus minus 3 times, and when you take out a 9, you're going to end up with 3 plus 4i, uh-oh, 
does not look good. And then you just you just need to square root three plus four i. That's a different story. Obviously, you can do it. Uh, there's a couple different ways to do it. Uh, let me tell you, and then I'll probably show you a second branch of the second method. I know this has been a lot of methods, but hopefully this is going to help you with uh, you know lots of different things. So how do you square root three plus four i? Let me tell you something. You can set it equal to x plus y i, and then square both sides. When you square, this becomes that, remember? That's a special formula. And then from here, we get a system of equations. x squared minus y squared is equal to 3. And 2xy is 4, which means xy is equal to 2. And try to guess. I think 2 and 1 is going to work, right? If x is 2 and y is 1, the uh, difference of squares is going to be 4 minus 1, which is 3. So awesome. This means that z is equal to x plus yi, which is 2 plus i. So 2 plus i is one of the square roots, but remember, there are two square roots, uh, z and negative z. Make sense? So one of them is going to be like z equals, by the way, this is not, this shouldn't be called z. Uh, this is w, because z is already there. And this is going to be negative i plus minus 3 times this, which is going to give me um, this. And obviously, the plus minus is taking care of the square roots, right? So it's going to give me negative i plus 6 plus 3i over 2. That's going to be 6 plus 2i, 3 plus i, and z sub 1. And z sub 2 is going to be negative i minus 6 minus 3i divided by 2. And that's going to be negative 3 minus 2i. All right, so there should be two solutions to this equation because it's quadratic. And now another way to look at it would be uh, just replace z with a plus pi and go with that. But I think this is good enough. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.